Hello and welcome to Way TV. I'm your host, Joe Laird, licensed professional counselor. And today I want to talk to you about tips and strategies on how you can become great. Now when I talk about greatness, I'm not talking about uh, being this giant like uh, President Barack Obama, Martin Luther King, or Mahatma Gandhi. What I'm talking about is maximizing the potential that you have in you. Combining all of your resources, your strength and your energy and focus it on being the best version of you. And that's what being great is about. It's not being this monumental giant. It's maximizing your potential and being the best that you can be. So today's topic is tips and strategies on becoming great. But before I get started, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, share the content uh, with people that you know, because I want to grow like you want to grow. And so we want to grow together. Can we have that pack? Let's grow together. You were created to do good things. So let's talk about some strategies and some tips to help you become great. Tip number one, develop a relationship with your creator. That's right. You were created for a purpose and developing a prayer life will give you access to the God of this universe. Spending five minutes a day, that's right, start off with five minutes a day in prayer and meditation. Prayer is communicating with the God of this earth, right? Prayer is a two-way street. You talk and then you listen, or you listen and then you talk. It's a dialogue, not a monologue. So when you're in prayer, be still. Sometimes you may not even know what to say. Your spirit will communicate with the God of the universe, okay? So sometimes you just, you know, bring your request. Hello, this is what I wanna talk about today. I wanna know what it is you want me to do. Pray five minutes next week. Pray 10 minutes. You want to develop a relationship with the creator of heaven and earth so that he can give you the instructions for that day or for your life. Prayer and meditation will allow you to center yourself, to quiet yourself, to be still before you rush out into this world. Your creator wants you to have a more abundant life. Prayer and meditation will allow you to slow down and center yourself, right? Before you go out into this world. And because your creator created you, he has a purpose for your life. He wants you to have life more abundantly. He wants you to make less mistakes. He wants you to care for others. And he wants you to better mankind. So seek a relationship with your creator. Seeking a relationship with your creator, he wants you to make the best choices, right? And again, prayer is a two-way street. It's not just, you know, hey, this is what I want. Give me this, come on God, I need this. I need a thousand acres and I want a big mansion and a big house. No, prayer is, you know what, Father, I need to better myself so that I can go out and work and get these things. All right, work on increasing your prayer life weekly, right? Things happen when you pray that don't happen when you don't. Prayer is the most effective behavior that you can do. Believe that, say it again. Prayer is the most effective behavior that you can do because prayer changes things. Tip number two, lose your pride. In order to be great, you must lose your pride. You see, a prideful person does not seek help. They depend on their own wisdom and their own counsel. They will not accept counsel and wisdom from others. A humble person will listen to wisdom and grow. Others will want to pour into that individual. See, a, a prideful person burns bridges. A humble person builds bridges. Do you know of any one that's prideful, that knows everything, and so before you even come up to them, they have the answer. They finish your sentences for you. They think they know everything and you really can't share anything with them, which makes you not want to share it with them. 
that person is dangerous, right? Tip number three, sacrifice. I'll give you a definition of sacrifice. Sacrifice is a loss of something you give up, usually for the sake of a better cause. You must be willing to give up some people, some places, some things, some friends, some, some TV, some food, sacrifice, right? That means, you know what? I'm gonna put this off. I don't need this because I wanna be better in this area. I, I'm gonna give that up. I'm willing to set that aside because it's not gonna make me better. In actuality, it's hindering me, right? For instance, if I wanna lose weight, what should I give up? If I wanna get better grades, what should I give up? In order to go up, I gotta give up something, right? You want better relationships? You want a better marriage? What should you give up? See, in order to go up, there's some things that you gotta give up. That's what makes us great, learning to hone our focus and get rid of the things that are hindering us from going to the next le level. You must be willing to sacrifice negative people and things that are still in your time. Because that's what they're doing. They're not adding to your life. When you sit down and you watch the game, you, you're having fun, you're elated, but your pocketbook or your pockets aren't getting any bigger. You're not making any money. Even if you bet, that's a 50-50 chance. So that you can spend more time focusing on your dreams and goals, you got to sacrifice and give something up. That's not too much to ask. If you want to be the best version of you, you got to give up something. You got to be willing to sacrifice. If you want to be great, you must leave your comfort zone. You have to learn how to challenge yourself, push yourself, go to the next level, program your thinking, say, I want to be great. I can do this. I will do this, right? What will happen when you take two of those hours that you spend on TV or social media and you put it on your goals and your dreams? What do you have to lose? Success and being great. It depends on you. So do me this favor, create a checklist. Create a checklist of all those people, places, and things, right, that are negative, that are not impacting your life in a positive way that's in your life right now. Create another checklist of all the things that you could be doing. For instance, watching TV two hours a day, create a checklist. Put in the positive checklist, building my project or my dream house, right? Rome wasn't built in a day, but it was built inch by inch. Progress starts inch by inch, right? Create a checklist and, and look at the places that you go to that are not positive. The things that you're doing that's not positive and put it in your positive checklist and, and put that time that you've taken from this box, put it in this box so that you can put it on the things that you want to do, the goals that you want to achieve, the dreams and the desires that you have. Instead of spending money on cigarettes or alcohol or partying, put that money in the bank account to go towards your new car, your new house, right? You earned it. Don't throw your money away, your hard earned money away. Put it to something that's going to create money, right? Amen. Tip number four. In order for you to become great, you must develop self-discipline. Self-discipline is the ability to make yourself do the things you know you should do, even when you don't want to do them. The ability to make yourself do the things you know you should do, even when you don't want to do them. You must develop self-discipline in order to finish anything. And guess what? That's not hard to do. Start by straightening your bed every morning. That, after a while, becomes a discipline. Think about this. A habit 
is a behavior that you consistently do, sometimes consciously and unconsciously. A habit is a behavior that you consistently do, consciously or unconsciously. People get up, smoke cigarettes every day. People want to drink a beer. People want to be sexually active. These are habits and behaviors that we consistently do or unknowingly do. The Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. So develop self-discipline. Now, in order for you to go to the next level, you have to be willing, like I said earlier, to sacrifice and give up some things. Self-discipline allows you to remain focused on the task at hand by removing and not focusing all the things that distract you. Self-discipline means I need to cut my phone off because every time it rings, even when those special rings, you know, for those special people, when that special ring comes, all of a sudden that my heart picks up and I'm all happy, get this flooded with happy feelings. You've been conditioned. I talked about that and we'll talk about that later. But you get those happy feelings, now you're distracted. Every time you go to check your phone, you're being distracted, right? Self-discipline says, I'm gonna cut my phone off and focus on what I need to focus on. I got homework to do, but every time it beeps, I'm turning away, and now I lost my train of thought. Those cell phones distract you, those notifications distract you. When an athlete goes into training, they lead their family, they lead their friends. They work out five, six times a day. They eat healthy meals, right? Because they're trying to prepare their mind and their body for the task at hand. Their goal is to win a championship. And say that, so their job is to focus their energy, become self-disciplined, cut out the distractions, and build their body and so that they can compete at a high level. They train for years, right? Most athletes started at seven and eight years old, but you see them at 20 years old on the football field, boxing, um, basketball, tennis. They've been training for years. We're just now seeing them for the first time, but they've been training for years. Notice all humans are born with greatness. All humans are born with greatness. And through self-discipline and consistency, what's in you will come out. You were born for greatness. With self-discipline and consistency, it's gonna come out. So I just wanna review some of the tips and strategies that I talked about earlier. In order to be great, you have to develop a relationship with God, with the God of the universe, with your higher power, whatever you wanna call it. You have to learn how to meditate, right? Spend time in meditation, spend time with the God, communicating with him in prayer. Number two, you gotta lose the pride. Cause pride will cause people to scatter. They don't wanna be around you if we prideful and you know everything. Tip number three, sacrifice. You gotta be willing to give up something in order to go up. Yeah. Number four, and we'll end with this one, self-discipline. The ability to stay focused to make yourself do the things that you know you should, even when you don't want to. Self-discipline. That's all I have for today. But again, I like to plug my book, There's a Way. It's a powerful book about the journey of four young women and their life experiences. Again, anybody that reads this book, they can get something out of it. This book will give you some understanding of some of the things that you've already been through, some of the things that people that you know are going through, and maybe you can help them after reading, share this book with them. You can find my book on Amazon.com. I think the price then went up to $10. But please support me. It's an awesome book, and it'll change the lives of individuals who read it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. Please remember the tips. Apply them to your life because you were born to be great. Have a blessed day.